Morning, uh, Dougie. Good morning. I understand uh, Dougie Alexander uh, for uh, the folks here. Um, Dougie is uh, going to discuss uh, several uh, things with us uh, this morning in his house in the Falkirk. And I see about uh, three or four squirrels, grey squirrels, going up and down trees in front of me. So if I get a wee bit distracted, it's the squirrels, it's no Dougie. Uh, so that's about, that's about three, I'm counting there. Anyway, there's another one. Uh, so, we're going to discuss uh, Dougie's life and uh, piping, if you like. Well, it's not piping, it's drumming, but it's uh, related, piping and drumming. And also, it took him over to Brittany and various other things. So, we'll just start the ball rolling. Uh, Dougie, uh, have you always stayed in Falkirk and where were you born and all that sort of stuff? Give us a wee sort of a sentence or two. Well, I, I was born in Edinburgh and uh, my mother belonged to Colsaith in the west. Mm -hmm. She had been in service during the war and she obviously wanted to go back home. So... We went back to Colsaith when I was four years old. I progressed through school and my first job was in the North British Locomotive Company in Springburn in Glasgow. The, what was that again? The motor company? North British Locomotive Company. Oh, locomotive company, right. Aye, uh, aye. Made engines for rail. Lo locomotives, rail. yes, rail engines. Aye, for all over the world. Aye, go to India and all that sort That's of stuff. Correct, Africa, South so Africa, that. yes. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, what sort of uh, job did you actually do there? I started off in the drawing office. Mm -hmm. uh, and after a year, I was a bit bored sitting at a desk all day, so Aye. I went to the personnel officer and asked if we could vary my five-year apprenticeship. So I went from there into the workshops, the one workshop in Hyde Park, another in Atlas, and the one they called Dubsies was down at Queen's Park. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, I was involved in the, the manufacturing and progression with steam locomotives. Mm -hmm. Then we moved into the diesel area. Uh -huh. So, What we were, a year roughly was that? I started in the North British in 1956. Okay. So, and the diesel? The diesel was quite a job. Um, we were actually building the engines right. on licence right. from MAN in Germany. Huh? And we were also building diesel hydraulics and diesel electrics. Both the, the hydraulics was voice German mm -hmm. and the electrics were uh, they were German too believe it or no so what sort of functions did these uh, do the, you know the hydraulics and the, the electric they were the drive ok for uh, the, the, the parts of the railway engine if you like. The, the, they drove the locomotive yeah Um and I developed right through building the diesel engines and then the building the, installing them in the locomotive, mm -hmm. right through, we were test running the engines, we went as far as Derby, Swindon, mm -hmm. with coaches at behind and it was very interesting. Then... When my apprenticeship was finished, the bad news came. Firstly, the, the company got a letter from the government saying that the standard of the locomotives was excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Aye. there was two locomotives com uh, factories nearby, one being Side Rollock, uh, St. Rollox and one being Cowlairs. Aye, St. Rollox and Cowlairs, yeah. Everything in Glasgow, of course, just for the, the listener. Right? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. So that was really disappointing uh -huh. because I really liked the place, I liked the job. So then they came with a closing date. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. In the interim period, I met my wife in Falkirk at the ice rink. Okay. She belonged to Ellawa. Mm -hmm. So I explained to my future father-in-law at that time the situation, and he worked it with United Glass Bottlers, where they manufactured all types of glass enclosures, jam jars, whiskey bottles. Beer bottles. Beer bottles, you name and it. And uh, for a listener again, I happen to know that uh, I will make uh, beer. Well, uh, there, was, there was two breweries just adjacent to the glassworks. Okay, so they would serve one another, if you like. <laughs> and they also have a football club, uh, Alwa. They played Celtic just last week. That's right, aye. aye and they kicked Celtic off the park, but still managed to get beat 2-1 uh, in the process. <laughs> ah, it's just, uh, so Alice a, li a lively wee place, you know. Right. That's great. Right. So, well then, he got me a job in the glassworks, uh -huh. on the maintenance side, which was very, very interesting. Yeah. So, I was in charge of this section of the work, for the mechanics of the machine and the maintenance of the machine, yeah. or machines. He, at that time, I wasn't doing too much in the pipe band scene. Okay. I just met the wife and so forth, so that explains everything. Right, okay. I then got asked if I'd join Canoe Colliery Pipe Band. So can we rewind just a wee second, Dougie? When did you start with drumming then? Well, I'll go, do, I'll go back to when I was... Okay, right, fine. I'll go back to when I was nine years old. Ah, right. Well, I started learning when I was seven. Mm -hmm. And I played at Cowell when I was nine. That was with Colsai Thistle Pipe Band. Right. They were in grade three. Okay. He, and then... Any kind of famous folk in the, that band that later went on well, to make their mark? Well, the, the tutor that we had was ex pipe major of Muirhead and Sons, pipe major Jimmy Wilson. Okay. Who, Jackie Smith followed Jimmy, mm -hmm. and as you know, Bob Hardy followed oh. Jackie. Uh -huh. And the drum instructor was his son Hugh, mm -hmm. who also played with Muirheads. Right. So, so I went right away. Yeah. It was a it was a good grounding. Uh -huh. Hugh was competing in the World Solos, which was in in Glasgow at that time in the uh, academy. Yeah. And he said to me, and the secretary of the band, enter Doogie for the juveniles. Uh -huh. So the secretary came and said. I've got a total rear end of it, mm -hmm. but you're not entered. Mm -hmm. So Hugh said, right, enter them for the adults. Mm -hmm. By this time, I was 14. Right. And I played in the adults, and I tied for for sixth place with Bert Barr, a shots and Dykehead. For goodness sake. When I was in grade C, equal size thistle. No. A couple of weak questions here. When drummers are competing and the solo drumming, they're normally accompanied by one piper. I take it that was the case there. And if so, who actually played for you that day? Pipe Major, Pipe Major Jimmy Wilson. Okay, great. And the uh, next question is what did he play? Was it a March of Spain Reel? Or March of Spain Reel. Uh, do you remember the tunes? Abercairney Highlanders, Durney Ferry, and Alex C. McGregor. Well done. Uh, the suspay would maybe be a wee bit easier than a lot of other suspays, or is that I would say it was easier to execute. Yeah, yeah. And you got your timing easier. Yeah. But you Jimmy still Wilson, phrase it and everything. Aye. Ah, exactly. And aye. But Hugh was a very good instructor. Aye. And Jimmy was excellent. Yeah. Before we went in this, on stage, or even practising in the band hall, Never take your foot, your eyes off my foot. Aye. I had to watch him all the time. But, um, and 
believe it or not, the winner, the juvenile Aye. section that I didn't get to play in was Alec Dewey of Muirheads. Right. And his father, Andrew, was the pipe sergeant of Muirheads. Uh-huh. And then, as I say, I was asked to join Keneal Colliery Pipe Band, who were then in grade two, a very good band. I remember them, yeah. He, I was in Keneal Colliery, and the leading drummer of Keneal at that time was Tom Mackay. Mm-hmm. So, the BP band started. And Tom Mackay... British Petroleum. At the beginning it was BHC, I don't know if you remember that. British Hydrocarbon Hydrocarbon Chemicals. And the basin... uh, Gregemouth. Gregemouth at the chemical side and the the refinery side. side. uh And the pipe major was Alec Kiddy, ex-Muirheads. Okay. So we started, well, Tom Mackay went and he said, you coming with me, Dougie? I said, well, I will do. But we were starting in grade four. Mm-hmm. So we went and the band started and we were ready to compete. And Tom Mackay said to me, Dougie, I'm going for an interview to go to Invergordon Distillery Pipe Band. He says, do you want to come? That was a new band created at that time. Aye, this was brand new. So again, I tried it and I didn't take the offer. He... Well, you examined uh, the position yes, and I, the, the condition against and, it. Yeah. For uh, any particular reason, do you? Okay. Aye. Hey, aye. I don't know what you've heard. Aye, aye, well. It's hey, well, it's it, 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 it was far away, Alan. Aye, aye. And my son was only months old. And you needed to change your job, I suppose. Well, I was going to be maintenance in the distillery. Ah, right, uh huh. Uh-huh. Hey, and there was no accommodation available. Aye. They were building brand new houses mm-hmm. that would be ready in 69 months. Aye. So I was in the accommodation. Aye. Did you actually go there? I went up and I lasted a weekend. Ah, right. Aye, okay. Aye. Uh, Aye. And I, I phoned my boss my, in, the, in the last words in Alawa. I said, Joe, any chance of me coming back? He says, get down here as quick as you can. Right, okay. So, let's so, the, uh, and then in, huh? I came back and I went to Grangemouth. Uh-huh. To what to, there? To, to the, no, to, to the practice, the BP practice. Oh, aye. Right, aye. Mm-hmm. And I like kiddies standing. And my intention was to go and join Muirheads. Mm-hmm. And I like kiddies said, Are you went in? I said, yes. He says, hey, your dress is there. Mm-hmm. Take it away with you. Aye, the uniform, aye. Uh-huh. And he says, hey, would you take the leading drummer's job? Uh-huh. So I said, aye. So I was leading drummer f- for the beginning then. Mm-hmm. The first time we put the kilts on, I was leading drummer. Okay. We started in grade four. We were two years in grade four. Two years in grade three. Mm-hmm. One year in grade two, and we were in grade one in five years. That's very good. So, when we got to grade one, we had a really good band. What year was that? In 1968. Okay, uh-huh, right. And we were in grade one in 69. Mm-hmm. And our first grade one competition was in Renfrew. It was the British Championship then. Aye. And the judges were still undercover. Uh, if we explain that to the viewer, been under cover, it was a, a green sort of boxy canvas say, tent with just a chair in it and no much room for uh, nothing else. And uh, uh, it was fondly uh, talked about in the beer tent that the judges always carried a sharp pencil for poking a hole in the canvas so <laughs> I could see who was playing. 
Correct. <laughs> <laughs> That'll point to my next answer. Right right. <laughs> when we're third. Uh huh. Edinburgh Place were first. Okay. Pureheads were second, and we were third. Aye. So I would probably be playing with Strathclyde Police at that. Uh, no, Glasgow Police, City of Glasgow Police uh-huh. at that time. That's right. In uh, 1969, mm-hmm. and uh, we were kind of starting in the, the slide down in 1969. So right. we had been a champion of champions in 1967 under Ronnie Horry. Uh-huh. Won mm-hmm. everything except the world switch. Muirheads won by a tenth of a point. Uh-huh fighting preference or something uh, which was fair enough because Muirheads were going great at that time and mm-hmm. we get beat the following year I think it was Aberdeen by a quarter of a point by the same band Muirheads mm, that's right and uh, the following year we were third and then by the six and nine and I was started in this slide down so it does a uh, surprise me that uh, you know BP and others were sneaking in in front of the the set of Glasgow Police Pipe Band by the end of the 60s. Well, to be honest, Alan, we were astounded. Aye. <laughs> we were just quite happy to get playing in Grade 1 at the oh, time. No, aye, aye, aye. Uh, but Did you win any other prizes uh, that season? No. So it was just a third, it was a one. Well, okay, fair enough, it's a uh, foot in the door, aye. And as a lot of bands have experienced going and they jump into grade one ah. you're not winning any correct the morale started to go down aye and we just weren't getting anywhere no and Alec Kiddy was getting older mm-hmm. ready to retire so yeah. we're pleased spread we're over uh, is this a year or two or what that you're talking about this in grade one I know this trend that you're talking about just now. well we were, we were in grade one for two years mm-hmm. it started really taking a I downward the turn the major was ready for the time aye so um, there was a mini tattoo in the Grangemouth Stadium so we went and played in that mm-hmm and Muirheads were also playing. Mm-hmm. And there was an, an interval, and we were moving around, and I bumped into Robert Turner, mm-hmm. the leading drummer of Muirheads. Okay. He said, How are you getting on? I said, I'm getting on fine. I said, But the band's not that good. Mm-hmm. And we're not getting anywhere. He says, You know, fancy coming? Uh-huh. So I said, Aye. Mm-hmm. So I joined Muirhead's the following Monday. So was that 71 or around about that? 71, 72. My first, my first Worlds was in the air. Aye. That was my first World Championship with Muirhead's. So around about 71 anyway, you're joining the Muirhead's. Mm. Who was the pipe major and how were they doing at that point? He... Bob Hardy was pipe major and Robert Turner was leading drummer. Okay. Uh, Turner had a brother. No, no, that was Paul Turner. No, that. It was a different Turner. Was it? Okay. A nice guy. Well, that's good to clarify that one, eh? Aye, well, uh, Paul Turner was a really nice guy. He played, he originally played with uh, the police in Belfast was it was a band that I can remember right. firstly. And then he came across here and he joined the Vale, Vale Athel. Right. He was leading them in the Vale Athel for quite okay. a, some so time. So to avoid the uh, confusion, I will not talk about Paul Turner again, but that's it. So yeah. But, but Robert Turner was a really, really talented and musical drummer. Okay. And I learned a lot from him to be to be really honest. How would you've equated him and uh, Alec Connell, who uh, that time was the leading drummer with the police band. I knew Alec well. Aye. And in fact, I used to socialise with him. Aye. Aye. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, was it different styles of drumming? Totally. No, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Robert Turner was very, very musical. Aye. Alec was a very good drummer. Mm-hmm. And it was a different style. 
I like played more to suit the the Pipers and the band. Uh, well, so did Robert, to be really honest, Alan. Aye. Uh, but it's, uh, what's the difference in style then? Can you describe it? To me, it was partly rudimentary. Mm -hmm. And Robert Turner had the technique of using a wide variety of rudiments in the, in the, in the settings. Okay. And to me, it was, you could damn near fizzle the tune to him. Aye, aye. And one, one night at the practice in particular, <clears throat> we just started to practice a new MSR. So we got through it, fine. Tried it again. The third time, Bob Hardy says, Robert, change the third part of this to spay. There you are, eh? Aye. That was it. Aye. No qualms. Aye. Do it. Aye. <laughs> so that was it, really. And I wouldn't say that Bob criti criticised. No, well, I but commented. But, but I, just, I, uh, I, he obviously didn't like it. And I, it was maybe distracting him okay. to a certain extent. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it's maybe doing the same the rest of the, back, the, the papers. Mm -hmm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. So uh, that was. But so how was it, how was the Muir head say pipe band doing then at that particular time? Were they still at the top? And uh, well, they were still at the top. Aye, aye that's mm -hmm. what I mean. Aye, aye. aye. Mm -hmm. Still winning first prizes and all this. Oh, aye, aye, we were winning. The the police were uh, dropped out the picture largely in the early seventies. Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, frequent first prizes now they'd probably be in the prize list somewhere uh -huh. not but time and then there was a change of pipe major around about 72 to uh, Ian McClellan mm -hmm. I knew from, Ian well too from uh, Ronnie who retired and now health whatever uh, trouble with his ears but anyway uh, that was the sort of changes the pipe band that there were the changes in shots uh, around about the same time with the pipe majors and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff in shots. Another band that came into contention when the Glasgow Police Band went, was, was Edinburgh. Aye. Under Ian McLeod. Yes, absolutely. Ian had always been there for a oh, decade right. or so. Ah, yes, aye. aye. But uh, I think Ian followed uh, Ramsey. Yeah. If I'm right in saying And Ramsey so. went to Edinburgh. Went to Edinburgh Gordon. Gordon, that's correct. So that was the sort of time shift there. Yep. Yeah. And uh, McAllister, uh, was it John McAllister? Uh, John Kim? McAllister was the, the pipe major. Pipe major of shots. I, I remember his father, but Aye. John was the, the pipe major. Aye, and at that he, time. he was making terrific uh, reads. In, that's uh, right, that's uh, correct. In the 70s, yep. uh, absolutely ter terrific reads. <clears throat> Nobody could touch him for read making for pipe bands. Um, and who was the shots uh, leading drummer at that time? Was it Alec Duthert? Mm -hmm. Did he come Alec. back from Invergordon? That was a bit. He, bit, he followed. To, he went to Invergordon. Yeah. How I long was it there for, roughly? And for Gordon? Aye. Four or five years? Yeah. So he would just come back in time for the, the early 70s again, I suppose. Mid 70s, I would say. Mid 70s, okay. Yeah. Right, aye. So a, a formidable jump, a drum course, really, through the, your uh, top well, levels in your, your um, bands in the first Going time. back to that time, mm -hmm. when... The Inver Gordon band was taking off. Mm -hmm. he, Jimmy Hutton was yeah. leading drummer of Muirheads. Yes. And he went to Inver Gordon with Alec Duthert. Okay. And that was when Robert Turner took over the, the leading drummer's job at, at, Inver, at right. Muirheads. Okay. Right. Did Hutton come back to came Muirheads? Back. Uh, no, no, no. That was unfinished. That was unfinished with Muirheads, ah. Uh. Right, that's, that's good to clarify. His that. brother was pipe sergeant at Muirheads by this time. Aye. But anyway, we're still on yourself. We're on the Muirheads. 
you've just joined the uh, 71 there about. So, what happened? How did it go over uh, these years? Well, I was I played with Muirheads for 10 years. Right. And we we're, were doing really, really well. And I remember one of the biggest disappointments. It was at the World Championship in Corby. Okay. And we really played well. Mm-hmm. And Edinburgh Police beat us by a quarter of a point. Okay. We got the sheets. And the ensemble judge at that year was John Fer- Jock Ferguson. So what are we talking about sheets there as a point, say, sheet that the, the judge yep. is right on? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ex Edinburgh Police. For goodness sake. Mm-hmm. And he had the five points in front of us for five ensemble. Points? Five points in front of us. Which is a bit like For ensemble. Like and they beat us by a quarter of a point. <laughs> so one judge actually uh, made a point of putting you right out. Correct. Right. Well, that's my take on it. No, well, that's, it. that's what we're sitting here uh, talking about. You know, it's uh, how you see things, your opinions and matters and all the rest of it. And, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, there's no point in sitting down here talking. So that was Corby. Did you? Uh, what sort of uh, world championships or other uh, championships did you win in the early seventies? Uh, are they too frequent? Are too many to mention? Or was it every one of them? Uh huh. Except the worlds. <laughs> I saw you were winning all the championship events: Aye. Scottish, British, European. That's right. Um, there's one other one, the world's, and there's, there's another one, a uh, label of forgotten, but they're just labels to me, they're just competitions and the major championship events in lieu of the, the small, the smaller uh, pipe band competitions that uh, you get a reduced uh, number of bands going to that particular thing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so. You're, you're winning that way there. Is that right? Now, you went abroad, I understand, a couple of times in your heads, is that right? The Corby year, uh-huh. we went direct for Corby to London, uh-huh. and that's when the, the CNE started in Toronto. Okay. And there was five of the grade one bands uh-huh. that went at the same time. The CNE? The Canadian National Exhibition. And the... In Tor- Toronto. Toronto. And uh, what month of the year was that, roughly? It must have been end of June, beginning of July. Okay, right. And uh, how did that go? It was excellent, but yep. hard, hard. Aye. Oh, I and the, You know, for example, we were still in bed. Mm-hmm. And the room doors were knocking. Mm-hmm. There was four years in the one room. Robert Turner opened the door and it was drummers wanting to come in and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where they were from? No. Brittany. Away, aye. Uh-huh. There was a, a band who was, Jack Espancy was the pipe major. Uh-huh. And Patrick Moller played in the same band. For goodness sake, aye. Uh-huh. They came here and played, I think it was grade two they played and it was, and uh, I couldn't repeat what Robert said, but we eventually, when we had time, we spent a bit of time with them. Aye, okay. But that started another thing. Uh Uh-huh. The next thing was that Jack Espancy sent an invite to go to the band to go and play in Camperley, no Camper. Aye, ah, yeah. Camperley is a different place. Uh-huh. So we went there, mm-hmm. <laughs> but that was transpired. Was that music festival in Camperley? Aye, aye, yes, it was. But it was mainly music and dance and aye, uh-huh. uh, Breton groups, Breton traditional music. Were you the but, only Scottish yes, band there? Yes, yeah. 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 We, we were the only band other than... Did it involve just the uh, parades? Or? 
parades and long parades. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Uh, so, the, again, it was a, a, an adventure, and uh, eventually Robert actually went to back to Brittany and they uh, helped the drum corps annary after that. Okay, uh-huh, right, okay. Uh, so, I went to the Toronto three years in succession. Uh, was that on three years? Three years, uh, well, no, it was on four years because I, I never went in the last year because... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I did the band go across each of these years? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aye, that's five year grade one bands. Some there was changes in the the, the bands that went. Hey, one in particular, hey, I remember the last time I was here, Dyson were there for the first time. Okay. Hey, that be Shepherd would be in charge. Bob Shepherd is a paint major. Yeah. Aye. Aye. And Edward Gordon came in. Uh huh. I think it was the second year Edward Gordon came in. Uh huh. Uh, so, but there was it was five grade one bands. It was a, it was good, but uh, hard going. Hard going, aye, yeah. Right. Was it a decent competition? A decent standard. Were you all able to play up to a good standard when you were at Toronto? Oh yes, aye, aye, yes. So it was a, it was a really the good. The weather and the travel didn't interfere with. No, 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 no. So it was okay. no, not at all. When we went to. From Corby, where we were second, we went to the CNE, mm -hmm. and the Hackle won it, and we were second again by that. I'm going to say, on the Hackle would be under Weatherson yep. at that time. Yes, I. John Weatherson. Ah, uh -huh. Wilson Young was the leading drummer. I played with Hackle in 1962. It was it close at uh -huh. Belfast? And uh, I think we did second in the Worlds that year, and it was a 277. I uh, remember them, I, uh, Johnny. Uh, the Territorial Army, they won it, and guess who's the Pike Major? John Weatherston. 1962. Correct. So, uh, it's amazing, uh, you know, the, the cross fertilisation between right. the, the bands yeah. and all this. And so, uh, right, you were abroad in uh, Canada. Uh, you, went, you mentioned Brittany. We'll come back to Brittany later on in this conversation. Yeah. Uh, where else did you go abroad with uh, Muirhead Pipe Band? Did you go to Russia? They, they, they were in Russia, but that was about four or five years before I joined. Okay, right. We so. went to uh, Sicily. Right. With the band, and it was really good. It was a festival of Almond Blossom. Uh huh. And they were there from all over the world. Yeah. It was really, really... Good playing. It was one of the way. enjoyments I had in Aye. going to festivals abroad. Aye. I remember doing one in Salerno, which is just up from Naples, if you like. Yeah. And the, in Salerno, I think it's two years. Or was it just one year? It doesn't matter. It was way back in 67, 68 with the police bike man. Mm -hmm. And the um, US Sixth Fleet Marching Band, a sort of jazz uh, group, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, were in the same hotel as us and uh, doing street parades and all the rest. And they were terrific. These guys were fantastic. Yeah. You know? <coughs> and uh, we gave them, a, no, they gave us Zippo lighters with the motif of USS Little Rock, uh, which was a spy ship in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And its sister ship had been seized by the North Koreans uh, early in the, I think it was the 60s, USS Pueblo, right? Anyway, we ended up with these Zippo lighters and sailor hats uh, from the... <laughs> the US uh, sailors Aye. and in return we gave them LPs long playing rec records for you lot out there LPs of the Glasgow police playing the, uh, the family favourites now 
I don't know much of Zippo letters cost the Americans, but uh, I think they get the worst part of the bargain because the record we gave them was useless and it's terrible. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what happens when you go abroad and it's, it's nice. Aye. We're not to Aquaterme the following year and mm. uh, that was the North of Italy and that was mm. a different audience. Different experience. Yep. Very good. It's good to go abroad. Oh, in yeah, any yeah. other place did you go with them? Abroad? Aye, with the, the Muirhead's Pipe Band. L'Oreal. L'Oreal. Aye, okay. L'Oreal's in Brittany, folks. Right, uh huh. And the. Did you arrange that at that time? Yes. Aye, so yeah. we'll come on, Back, on to that, yeah. right on to that later on. So, okay, we've we'll sort of covered the. the, the, the for the uh, visits, we've covered the uh, your winning prizes and all that sort of stuff in the early seventies. What happened to the band eventually in the later seventies? What was the score? The band was top of the shop mm -hmm. right through the seventies. Right. And then the bombshell burst. Mm-hmm. There was a difference. Of, Bob, Shardy, Bob Hardy had decided he was retiring. Okay. And it was an internal thing in the piping side. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another without mentioning names. The band was disbanded, mm -hmm. which was a real, real bro. Mm -hmm. Over tops, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. And the band was disbanded. Dear, dear. Are you able to say anything about it at all? Are the folks still living there? Aye. Aye. Yeah, Aye. Yeah. So, yeah, I could say, but I would prefer not to, Alan. Aye, okay. Yeah, but it was internal pipers only. Uh huh. And then Muirheads were very good about it. And they gave us a nice night out. Uh -huh. And they presented Bob and Robert with a nice retiral uh, gift, gift aye. Aye, aye. And that was it, just all within weeks. Did you play with anybody after that? Yes. Who? I was so disappointed mm -hmm. because I had really good times in Muirheads. And I had a great time with Robert Turner especially, and Peter Anderson, of course. So, my son at this time had just joined Wollaston. Mm -hmm. And Peter Anderson said, would you come, Peter moved to Muirheads and took the leading rubber's job mm -hmm. at Wollaston. And his brother Tom was pipe major. Tom was ex Muirheads too. Mm -hmm. He said, Would you come for a year? And I said, I'll, I will come in. And I was there for 10. For goodness <laughs> sake. <laughs> and again, uh, we went, there were, I think the, the band had just come up to grade three. Uh huh. And we went again, we went grade three, grade two, grade one. Uh huh. And how long did you last in the grade one? Four or five years. Ah, so. But again, no Tom, breaking through again. Eh? Tom Anderson could probably answer that one better than me. But I'm sure we Where was Tom? Eh? Was Tom Pike Major? Aye, ah, Tom was a Pike Major, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Peter was the leading drummer. See, Tom was my pipe major in the Renfrew band for a joint. Oh, it was a different Tom Anderson. Different Tom Anderson. Oh, I totally different. Ah, see, that's good to explain that. Aye, I know the Tom, the Tom Anderson you're talking about in the Renfrew band. Aye. Eventually joined Inver Gordon. That's right. Yep. And it was B. Cal, was it? Oh, or something. After that, yep. Aye, it's something to do with the. Uh, Ian McLeod in a band as well, he, after Ian McLeod left the Edinburgh Police Band. Forget it, doesn't matter, it's another story. He, but uh, anyway, it's good to just clarify, it's Aye. a different Tom Anderson. Uh, well, Tom, Tom's still 
to the fore and uh, aye. Tom makes good reads too. Uh huh. Aye. Mm hmm. In fact, I think he supplies Kenny. Where is he? Just the involvement. Just uh, next to Falkirk. Yeah. Next to Falkirk. Aye, okay, guy. right, fine. Right, so we had a couple of Tom Andersons and uh, so it's good to clarify on these different folks. So, Wallison anyway, so you enjoyed your, your time with Wallison then, eh? Oh, I was great. Um, That's substantial, but let's talk about it anyway. Brittany, now she had uh, a big influence on the uh, uh, artists moving from, uh, I call them artists, uh, Pipers, drummers, whatever, eh, and groups or solos or whatever, eh, leaving Scotland to go and play in Brittany and that sort of thing, and maybe uh, even the, the reverse, well, we can discuss that as well, where Britain, eh, Britain's come across here at your instance or otherwise. Um, so, a big part of your life, though, right? So, when did I actually start doing it? Well, uh, I've got to go back a wee bit. Right, aye. And the VP band, uh, we were invited to go to the festival in Campier. Okay. In 1969. Yes. We went there to Campier and uh, obviously we met the Bagad. Right. And made a lot of friends and uh, socially and otherwise. Describe what a bagad is to the listeners. Bagad is pipes, drums and the Breton instrument bombards. Uh-huh. Uh, which leads to a very difficult ensemble situation. Uh -huh. uh, and difficult just to listen to when we, we arrived there. Aye, because it's you're not totally, used to totally this. totally different. Yes, aye. But it wears on you and becomes very interesting. Aye. Uh, so, that particular deer, I got really involved with the leading drummer of Bagad, Campier, and my two friends that are still friends of 53 years, mm -hmm. Jack Corbyn, and Raymond Pruzenik. Mm -hmm. So, during our time, I spent a lot of time with the leading drummer at that time, Michel Noddy. Mm -hmm. Sadly, he's no longer with us. Mm -hmm. And, again, it was trying to get the rudimental side of his settings up a grade. So I sp spent a lot, a lot of time and the uh, we met the then president of the Breton Pipe Band Association, mm -hmm. the Breton Bagad Association, uh -huh. Polly Majari, who before that played with Campier, although he stayed in L'Oreal. So we had a great week and made many friends, as I say, and we started communicating and I went back the following year in 1970 on holiday mm -hmm. and Hervé Lemaire, who was the president of Bagad Campaign at that time, he got us a common, beautiful accommodation for the time I was there. But again, I spent a lot of time with the drum corps. Aye. Mm -hmm. and it did pay dividends because they came up very quick and during that year I was asked to go to Lorient to meet Polly Majari mm -hmm. I went to Lorient to the Palais de Congrès as it was called and I met the committee of the Lorient Festival mm -hmm. and the BP band were invited to, to go in 1972 okay. to Lorient. Mm -hmm. We went there and again a lot of friendship and getting to know different people 
We came back home and the president of the Loring Festival and Pollig came to Scotland with John Pierre Pichard at that time, who eventually ended up the director of L'Oreal. And we had a refreshment in a bar in Grangemouth and they asked me if I would be interested in taking on the delegate for Scotland. What did that involve, did you? Initially, you know, the, fe the first year we went to the festival in 72, there's one pipe band, BP, mm -hmm. a group of dancers, and a Gaelic singer. Okay. An Irish folk group, a Welsh folk group, and that was it. Right. And as the years progressed, it got bigger and bigger to, as you know, one of the biggest festivals in the whole of the world, not just Europe. Mm -hmm. Traditional festivals. Yes. And things just transpired from there. But what were your sort of, as to say, duties? What were, what were you tasked to, to do with this committee? Well, I had to arrange the Scottish delegation. Mm -hmm. Initially, as I said, pipe band, dancers and one singer. Okay. And I then had to go back and forth to L'Oreal mm -hmm. to discuss future programmes and it was just expanding through years. How did you travel to Brittany at that particular point? Uh, by car. Uh -huh. There was no flights into Brittany. Yeah, and that's what I was asking. And, uh, so did you take the car down to Plymouth and uh, across to Ros Roscoff or yes. did you go to San yes. Malo? Ros Roscoff. Roscoff. And uh, Initially, when I, when I took the job with the, as a delegate for Scotland, there was no Brittany Ferries. Mm -hmm. And luckily, Brittany Ferries, I think it was 73, I think, that Brittany Ferries started with one small ferry. Uh -huh. And it was mainly for agriculture. agriculture. Uh -huh. So that was a big plus. And again, it developed through the years. Yes. And there's just festivals that started getting bigger and bigger. And it involved a lot of work for me. Yes. It was different days for what we have now. We've got the Python Centre, the, 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 the certification in the university. Mm -hmm. I was going around about bars and pubs to mm -hmm. try and find decent folk groups, traditional yes. music. And uh, it just expanded. Through the years, I had maybe five different folk groups. Right. Four pipe bands. Can you mention the folk groups? Silly yes. Wizard, uh -huh. Ossian, Tannehill Weavers, McCalmans, Capper Cayley, mm -hmm. Ron Rigg. Not bad for a start, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what sort of pipe bands did you have uh, initially? Did you aim for well, first grade? Or the, committee, the committee were wanting the tops. Right. But there wasn't a lot of money. Uh, well, I, I was going to come on to that, uh, expenses and re remuneration, uh, what, what's uh, involved there? That was one of the difficult parts. Right. You know, in these days, there was little or none of the folk groups uh, full-time, mm -hmm. only professional, apart from run rig. Right. When I got, took Silly Wizard to L'Oreal, nobody had heard them here. Uh -huh. But again, it started developing. And when they've become professional, they're looking for money. But again, it was difficult. Grade 1 bands were looking for money. I took the information back to the committee. So eventually, 
they decided in grade two, try grade two. So I used to develop, if a band had, for example, had just been upgraded for grade three to grade two, mm-hmm. I used to tackle the for, for them. Yeah. But this w- with the, and the assumption, and the yeah. assumption uh-huh. that they were just going to integrate to to level off and get the feel of the grade. Yeah, yeah. And it worked very well. Uh huh. Aye. And I get to get to grade three. A couple of times we were kind of had one or two grade four bands through the years. But um, they then said, well, the, the festival by this time was growing rapidly mm-hmm. and there was a bit of money. So where I had grade two bands going for the whole festival, 13 days, right. they decided to have a special concert for grade one. Uh-huh. The other problem at that time was the dates of Lorient coincided with the World Championship. Aye, right, aye. Mm-hmm. So what we done was, I spoke to various Grade 1 bands, told them at a one-off concert, and they would be back in time for the World Championship. So that worked too. Mm-hmm. And we practised that kind of organising of the situation for many years. And did, at, by that time you were flying them in and out, I suppose? The grade one bands were flown in, yes. Yes, I. Via Paris. Right. And they used it to your way back to Brittany. Bus, coach. Bus, coach, my goodness. That'd be a fair old journey, eh? Yeah, uh, by the by coach. The, TGV, the, the Fast Express, so... Uh, the coach was about five hours. Aye. Well, it's not too bad, mind you. Right. Well. But, hi. Uh, right. <laughs> and as it, it, France, it, it don't have the motorways as such in Brittany, as they, well, they have to, but they're toll free, so maybe not the same quality as the rest of them in, in, from Paris out to Brittany. No. Uh, over a piece I'm talking about in that uh, part of the century. But, so, eh. Uh, Ah, that's interesting. But I know uh, in the nineties, because I was there, that you had Vale of Arthur pipe band mm-hmm. in ninety seven, if I recall correctly. Uh-huh. And b- before that, in the early nineties, you had the Glasgow Sky Association. Ah, yes. Well, again, I was still a wee bit involved with the festival in Campia. As well, and they asked me uh, if aye. I would if I would help them out aye. with bands. So was it just Lorium? You get involved with Camper as well. Well, Lorium was for a bit, aye. But I done it, and mm. the f- the first band that I invited to go was the Glasgow Sky, uh-huh. and that's where the friendship between Kenny McLeod and myself started. Okay, at that time, his brother Donald. Mm-hmm. Who stayed in Falkirk at the time? Aye. Was Spike Major. Donald's so, a dentist as well. He was my dentist in Falkirk. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Aye. So that's created a, another friendship, and Aye. I've been really friendly with Kenny Aye. since that day onwards. Aye. And sure also played with the Sky at that time too. Yeah. And. Uh, and I had the veil in camp there. Well, I, and Yannick Mongi's uh, sister, Gael, she eventually married uh, a tenor drummer in the Glasgow Sky Association pipe band, which stemmed from that particular visit. I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I, <laughs> you know Yannick Mongi. I know Yannick. I, 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 I still get texts from him doing again, you know. Aye, aye, aye. So it's either in Britain or, or French. <laughs> I he gets in touch with myself as well. Aye, aye, aye. At, uh, I was across in uh, Britain in 97 when the Vale of Athol had a very, very good uh, time in um, Campere. 
in 97. Aye. Now, well, that was me got them there. That's the, right. The, That's the, right. Ian, Ian, yep. Ian Duncan, aye. And in the, fact, the, the veil... They the, actually fixed up my hotel accommodation uh -huh. in that place next to the river. Uh, the, the, was it the Transvaal? No. D d d did you go across... I went across by car. Did you go across to present McCallum bagpipes? Eh, no, 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 no. I just went on a private visit. Oh, yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, but I ended up eh, walking past the Cayley Bar <laughs> and the... Eh, which we'll explain in a minute about the Cayley Bar. And uh, there was a veil of Arthur Pipe Band sitting yep. outside having a, a beer. And I latched on to myself and I was sworn in as honorary band president for a week. Aye. So I went everywhere with the, the band with a good laugh, actually. And uh, 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 they were all there, all the live wires and everything else. And I ended up uh, um, in... Uh, Duncan, the pipe major, he said, you do me a favour, I says, what's that? He says, I've asked me to judge a solo piping competition in the Thursday in the Gardens. He says, I can't do that, some of my pipers are uh, playing in it. He says, I says, what's involved? He says, I can sell about seven or nine pipers. Oh, anyway. I've done it too. I, he says, hey, so I'm saying, so just oh, I says that, I'll be fine. I'll be done in about an hour. It was about five hours because they had to play three times each or something. <laughs> Talking about that, as the years went on, eh, I judged that, you know, there's two champions by yeah. year in Brittany, one in February and one in August. Yeah. Well, I judged the February one twice in Van. Yeah. And it was a long day. And I just say the, the Concours de Bagade, yeah. eh, which is an annual. A function. Right. I, unfortunately, it's cancelled again this uh, year because of COVID and all the rest of it. But uh, there's that, that's the indoor one and it was, it was held in Brest for uh, many, many years. Mm. But you've mentioned Van. And then uh, the other, uh, the summer uh, mm, competitions in Lorient. I, I, I saw it interrupted, sorry. I judged it Lorient one year too. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a long day. Yeah. A very, very long oh, day. Aye, aye, aye. And totally different from here. Aye. Ten judges. I counted 13 at one point. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought that was a great thing because uh, we were talking earlier in this conversation today about the uh, one year competitions with uh, your heads. Aye. Uh, where one judge had uh, placed another band five points ahead of, of you and all that sort of stuff and it's almost and I tend to think and I stand to be corrected that if you've got 13 or say 10 or 12, 13 uh, judges judging at any kind of competition then it reduces say uh, the, the bias uh, level of you but it doesn't not it does for example, there was a, a round-up uh -huh. after the competition, which took an, an, an hour and a half, two hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if certain of the judges and the panel couldn't come to an agreement, mm -hmm. they'd have tape recorder in the middle of the table, mm -hmm. and they used to rewind it. Right, uh-huh. And did they not also, a, for a biased thing, cut off the the one that gave the most points to somebody and a, the one that gave the lowest points to somebody and just leave the there, other ones in the middle? There was something like that eventually, Aye. but I wasn't involved with that. <laughs> <laughs>
again, getting back to the painting side of yes, Lyon. Yes, absolutely. We started a, an association, the Compagnons de Tour de Cosse, mm -hmm. which was a whiskey society. Okay. And obviously, to become a member was by invitation. Mm -hmm. And it really developed in a big way. Mm -hmm. So much so that the director of Macallan came to the festival. Okay. And I'm still friendly with him to this day. Uh -huh. Willie Phillips. Okay. And they started offering sponsorship of the McAllen Trophy. And describe what that is. It's a solo competition uh -huh. run over two days mm -hmm. initially. Yeah. Of uh, three pipers mm -hmm. from each of the Celtic countries three yeah. Scotland, three Irish, and three Britain. Mm -hmm. And the standard was very, very high. Yes. And we had two judges, two from Ireland, two from Brittany, and two from Scotland. Yeah. And that was a big success. Yes. Uh, How many times did the, each piper play? Three times? They played a selection of each. A selection of Irish, a selection of Scottish, and a selection of... Britain. Britain, yes. Mm -hmm. For the pipers from here initially... The Breton was very difficult, mm -hmm. uh, but they overcame it, I can assure you, because yes, uh. from my point of view, for a long number of years, it was Scotland that came at tops. Aye. And there was Kenny McLeod, the... Kenny he, won it, yes. Uh -huh. He won it in uh, 91, I think, or something like that. Aye, it was, that was... Early the, 90s. The, the early, it was the early days of the McAllen Trophy. Yeah. And Fred Morrison, of course. Fred, Gordon, How Duncan. How many times has uh, Fred won it? All? <laughs> um, my last count was seven times, Alan. Aye, aye. And Gordon Duncan was seven times too. Right, uh-huh. So over the years, Scotland had a, a lot of success. Yes. Aye. Uh, but you're right, Kenny won it, and... Uh, but Patrick uh, Mollard uh, must have had a, a big input there too. He played in the, in the early years, Did he? Alan. Uh -huh. But uh, latterly, he was more in the judging side. Judging, of yes. Uh, Did uh, Jackie Pansé ever play in it? No. Right. Because there was friction. Okay. Jackie didn't want to be recognised as a big ad. He wanted to be recognised as a pipe band. Aye, aye, aye. So he the was the kilts, leaning very much towards the, the Scottish tradition That's rather right. than the Breton That's tradition. Well, of course, Jackie's based away in the fringe of uh, Brittany or where but it's somehow. In Cancal. Cancal just Cancal, got a little fair. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So anyway, moving on, a... Uh, any other, Heavy Lafloch, did he, how did he do uh, with that competition? Did Heavy no, McCallan, play? Well, Heavy came into it in the latter years, yeah. when I was there, you know, we, yeah. you know, way back to the, I, I don't know what age Heavy will be now, but no. he must have been a really young, young boy. He's still a lot younger than you and I. Well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But the, uh, oh, a lot of the Breton papers progressed aye. through the years. Aye. But you get the brilliant papers now, Sylvain Hamon. Oh, Sylvain, he, Hervey, the, um, Xavier Bordeaux. Bord 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 you. Aye. aye. Well, again, I'll come back to that when we come into Celtic Connections. Yeah, absolutely, yes, I know. Because when I get involved with Celtic Connections, well, the, the, the committee of Celtic Connections contacted me to see if it was possible for them to go to Lorient for a year. Uh -huh. Over the first year. Yeah. Just to see what's see happening. And the organisation of it. Yeah. Celtic Connections is uh, 
Something that happens. It's a festival of music uh, in Glasgow in the winter months, the latter half of the January into February. Mm, right? That's correct. He, so, where did I finish there? Uh, you were uh, the, the Celtic Connections. I right? will, that's Celtic Connections. So, initially, I had grade one bands doing a concert, and I got Campier over. Mm-hmm. And Campier and Scottish Power done a joint concert yeah. on the first on the Saturday night. Yeah. And that went down well. Mm-hmm. So we had a meeting, and they wanted to do much more on the piping side. So they kept the evening concert. So again, I had Campier over, and Cap Caval over, just doing the evening concert. Mm-hmm. And a we started solo piping. Yes. And it just sprung to my head after uh, Gordon Duncan sadly passed on. I said, we could start the Gordon Duncan Memorial yes. solo piping competition. Mm-hmm. So I phoned Ian mm-hmm. just to see it was agreeable and his family. And Ian said, by all means, do you? Right. Uh, oh, it was uh, Ian Duncan, his brother. Ah, right. uh, Ian. Mm-hmm. ex bike major of Vale of Yeah. And uh, again, that went up and up and up. I think Sylvain Hamon won. He that. won the first year. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> yes. Quite nonchalant when he went up for the prize, to much the consternation of John Wilson, who was MC. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't understand how everybody uh, was. Uh, a guy was so laid back about winning the overall thing against uh, Willie McCallum, Roddy McLeod and all the rest of it, you know. Yeah. And, and Sylvan was quite unfazed, you know. Aye, but it, 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 he spent a lot of time in Scotland Aye, but in the early years. Wonderful instrument that Aye. day. And, uh, of course, as usual, a great blower of the instrument. Okay. Great, uh, he's, he's very, very, very clear. A precise player and uh, everything that uh, Sylvain plays is just amazing. He's a really you know? composed lad and a, oh. a, a very, very nice lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. As Hervé Lafocke is too, you know. Yeah. And They're all teaching, of course, uh, Salt Biden and all the rest of it. Uh, Britain and uh, Hervé Lafocke has been a pipe major within the Cap uh, Caval mm-hmm. uh, uh, Brigade. And uh, yep. of course, Savannah uh, plays there. And I don't think he's Xavier. Does he still play with Cap Cabal? Xavier would it? No. No, no, I thought aye. There's a wee bit of aye, okay, internal. Aye. The other good piper is um, Alexi Munier. Yeah, he's, he's a, a lawyer. He's a, he's a, a very, lawyer. very good. He's a very good piper yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Aye. Now, uh, is it? At this time to mention your your link with the the Campere, uh, Bagad Campere. My what uh, Link, any link? No. I you know I. I think it, I'm. It, a wee bit of affection for Big Bagad Campere, right? Okay. Well, again, it was becoming a quite a joke in Lorient. If I was heading for Lorient. Aye. It was a laugh round the table at the meetings. Is Dougie going to camp here first or is he coming straight to Lorient? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I could, have been, I could say uh, quite honestly that I'm recognised as being part of the Baghdad. Aye. Uh, although I've no input. No, but... but uh, uh, the friendship's still there. Yeah. So much so that I got this three years ago. Well, we'll take a wee photograph of that and we'll include it in the thing. And I've still carried on the friendship with yep. many of them, my. But uh, how did you become involved? Was it because you knew these chaps uh, 
from a camp here of Espo and that sort of thing? Just the first year I went with BP. Aye, okay. And as I helped the Dunk Corps on many occasions, the friendship within the, the Baghdad yeah. just got greater and greater. I, I, I just knew nearly every member of the Baghdad. Yeah. And Erwin Rapa was a big major at the time. See, we touched on it earlier, but um, did you find a, a difficulty in, uh, and did uh, the people in France generally find a difficulty uh, funding uh, these uh, people coming across from Scotland? Uh, you know, how, in terms of travel, accommodation and uh, other expenses, food, that sort of thing, how did, did that develop or did they get better or worse or what was it? In L'Oreal? Just uh, L'Oreal and the Camper and Camper. everything else. Eh? Well, in L'Oreal it got better, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say it was ideal. No. The top grade bands obviously wanted to fly. Yeah. Just due to Commitments, Aye. really, and they couldn't afford, a lot of them couldn't afford just to relax yeah. for 13 days and yeah. to keep the practices going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, so, till this day, hey, well, since I stopped, <coughs> there's nobody any more than one pipe band there. No. One, one year, mm -hmm. well, most years, latterly. I had four bands there for mm -hmm. the whole festival. Yeah. And at least two grade one bands and to do the special concerts. Okay, right. Hey, so the bus journey it was quite a quite arduous. It was I and the the ferry journey I. caused some not problems, but a bit of trouble on their arrival. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> the demon. Aye, I know. The, the, the wee drum and all the rest. Correct. A uh, big you, drum. You, you can't blame them. Well, they, aye, it's because they're going abroad in the field of no, and all. And they're just so it's not, we've all seen it. The, uh, they get them dried out within a day and then... But uh, they, they, I find that the pipe bands really... Most of them are quite professional because if you're giving them a time and a position to, to line up and they just play it, then they'll do it, you know. With no problem that way at all. No. But again, getting back to the painting side of yes, the Yes, absolutely. We started a, an association, the Compagnons de Tour de Cos, mm -hmm. which was a whisky society. Okay. And... Obviously, to become a member was by invitation. Mm -hmm. And it really developed in a big way. Mm -hmm. So much so that the director of Macallan came to the festival. Okay. And I'm still friendly with him to this day. Uh -huh. Willie Phillips. Okay. And they started offering sponsorship of the Macallan Trophy. And describe what that is. It's a solo competition uh -huh. run over two days mm -hmm. initially yeah. of uh, three pipers mm -hmm. from each of the Celtic countries, three yeah. Scotland, three Irish and three Britain. Mm -hmm. And the standard was very, very high. Yes. And we had two judges Two from Ireland, two from Brittany, and two from Scotland. Yeah. And that was a big success. Yes. Uh, How many times did each paper play? Three times? They played a selection of each. A selection of Irish, a selection of Scottish, and a selection of... Britain. Britain, yes. Mm -hmm. For the papers from here, initially, the Britain was very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but... 
they overcame it, I can assure you, because yes, from our point of view, for a long number of years, it was Scotland that came at tops. Aye. And there was Kenny a McLeod, the, Kenny he, won it, yes. Uh -huh. He won it in uh, 91, I think, or something like that. Aye, it was, that was early, the, 90s, the, the anyway. early, it was the early days of the McAllen Trophy. Yeah. And Fred Morrison, of course. Fred Gordon Duncan. How many times has uh, Fred won it? <laughs> um, I'll, my last count was seven times, Alan. Aye, aye. And Gordon Duncan was seven times too. Right, uh-huh. So over the years, Scotland had a, a lot of success. Yes. Aye. Uh, but you're right, Kenny won it and... Uh, but Patrick eh, Mollard. Eh, Mollard must have had a, a, a big input there too. He played in the, in the early years, Did he? Alan. Uh -huh. But eh, latterly, he was more in the judging side. Judging, of it. yes. Uh, Did eh, Jackie Pensé ever play in it? No. Right. Because there was friction. Okay. Jackie didn't want to be recognised as a bag ad. He wanted to be recognised as a pipe band. Aye, aye, aye. So he the was the leaning very much towards the Scotland. Scottish tradition That's rather right. than the Breton tradition. That's correct. But of course, Jackie's based away in the fringe of uh, Brittany or uh, where was some In Cancal. Cancal just Can -Cal. a little bit. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So anyway, moving on. Uh, any other? Uh, heavier the flock? Did he, how did he do uh, with that competition? Did Hervey you know, ever play? Well, Hervey came into it in the latter years. Yeah. When I was there, you know, we, yeah. you know, way back to the, I, I don't know what age Hervey will be now, but yeah. he must have been a really young, young boy. He's still a lot younger than you and I. Well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but the... Uh, Oh, a lot of the Breton papers progressed Aye. through the years. Aye. But... You've got the brilliant papers now, Sylvain Hamon. Oh, Sylvain, he, Hervey, the... Um, Xavier Bordeaux. Bordeaux, Bordeaux. Aye. Aye. Well, again, I'll come back to that when we come into Celtic Connections. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Uh -huh. Because when I get involved with Celtic Connections... Well, the, the, the committee of Celtic Connections contacted me to see if it was possible for them to go to Lorient for a year. Uh -huh. Over the first year. Yeah. Just to see what's happening. And the organisation of it. Yeah. Cel Celtic Connections is uh, something that happens. Uh, it's a festival of music uh, in Glasgow in the winter months, the latter half of the January into February. Oh, that's great. Well, obviously, I did my best, my best to right. get them conditions, even better conditions, and yeah. they done their best to produce. But uh, I remember speaking to Yannick Mongi about the uh, funding. Uh, he does uh, studies of... Uh, Breton language and dance and all that sort of stuff. He's the director of some the Breton language college or whatever eh, for that. And it's there to do folk working for him, which he done a, quite a decent job. And his wife's a school teacher as well. But uh, Yannick was telling me that uh, it's a funny thing in, in France, eh, there's maybe 30 eh, cultural eh, um, people. Eh, delegates, whatever, and I found out to all the uh, departments and all the rest of it through France, but we see it's there to there's still about 20, 22 of them are actually working in Paris, so it's very, very Paris-centred, That's great. the whole <laughs> thing, and um, the, that and the, the, the local sort of uh, control from Paris, a uh, very much a uh, tightens up the purse strings just at the drop of a hat. So mm -hmm. it, 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 Britain and the other places in France I find it very, very difficult from year to year to know what their funding is or how to disperse the funds. Exactly. Would that sum it up? Mm, yep. Mm. Yeah. 
How did you go on? Did you speak uh, about a French when you went across here so many years? Or did you borrow her? What, what was I've, what, got, I've, got, I've got a motto. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never starve and I'll never go dry. <laughs> 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 but uh, I can understand, uh, you know, the likes of the festival meetings. Aye. I can understand what they were, what you they get were the discussing. Oh, aye, aye, yes, aye, no aye, problem. Aye. Yeah. But uh, anything but fluid, I can assure you. Very well. My wife's bit, much better than me. Fun enough, I studied French at Alliance Francaise, as you know. And, uh, but to this day, my ear for picking up conversations in a meeting is very, very... I find it difficult. I really do. Uh, I can think of what I want to say on a one-to-one -one basis, and generally I can communicate that way fine, but if I'm sitting around a table, a dinner table, for instance, uh, it annoyed me uh, when everybody was speaking fluent, fast French, and I was the only one in the company that didn't understand this. And I remember Yannick Mungi, he turned around to me one time in the restaurant saying, do you understand what they're talking about? I says, Yannick, I've actually thought about this. I says, and if I'm at the same dinner table and uh, the Scots around the table in Scotland, I says, I don't even understand what they're talking about because I'm too busy eating my food and I'm not that particularly interested. Yep. So... I've got to be laid back about the whole thing, you know, because exactly. the, the dinner table conversation is not that great at the best of times, no. whatever the language is, you know. But I was quite lucky to a certain extent, especially in L'Oreal. <clears throat> the president, Aye. he was a great guy. Aye. His, his, his business was distribution of wage spirits. Uh -huh. And he had no English whatsoever. Right. And he used to look at me around the table and he would get up and he would go to behind some of his Aye. So uh, shortly. So you left it and followed them away. We went to a nice restaurant and a meal with <laughs> Aye. But uh, you through your long association. We're just going to finish up in a minute, folks, but I want to get us wee quick bit in well I remember. Um, you had a, a certain affinity with wine and uh, you had an experience about uh, getting a wee award uh, regarding uh, wines and all the rest of it. That's right. Right, tell us about that. I was made a chevalier of the wine from Burgoy in the Loire Valley. Oh, for goodness sake, right, uh-huh. Eh, uh, the medal's light at your back, eh? Right, wait, go ahead and get it, let's see it. Right, okay. Yeah, hold that one up. Whoops. So, capture that, and I'll get a photograph of it, and we'll get it uh, properly represented in the uh, later on. So tell us about that. What, what's the story? Again, it was it was through the festival. You know, Piero was supplying wines and obviously they were the suppliers to him. Mm -hmm. And they visited the festival and we got involved and in there was a it was always on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. There was a pageant maybe 200 wine growers right. and their velvets and their it, it, it was like a bull model Aye. <laughs> and parade through the town and then you were there was a rendezvous in the town hall uh -huh. yep. and if you were be, be, being made a chevalier on that particular year they called your name out and they uh, a massive glass about this size. Uh -huh. Damn near a bottle of wine in there. Uh -huh. Right. You had to drink it on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> the, after the... Was the, it red or white? Mostly red. Aye. 
there was some rosy but um, and it was obviously white but it was mostly red Aye. and uh, after that we retired for a banquet okay. in this chateau and we'd be maybe arrive in the chateau one o'clock Mm-hmm. And that was used till the eight at night. Uh-huh. Five course meal, and you were drinking. Well, the best of wines. Oh dear. Aye, aye. So that was a an annual visitation after that for many a year. Oh, that's good, eh? By car. Right. <laughs> well, so it serves two purposes. It saved a lot of chopping and changing with public transport. Aye. And I could bring some wares back. Bring some back. Aye. Aye, aye. What, what city was that in? Uh, it was in Burgoy. Right. Which was not too far from Samur. Right, aye. And uh, Shinong is there as well. Shinong's just... Aye. You've got Samur, Shinong... Burgoy. I've been in Samir. Yes, I, I knew you'd been I, you'd contacts in Samir. Uh, through France by car. Marvellous. Aye, oh, uh, no. You know, they uh, landed at Bordeaux, uh, Brittany Ferries, oh, and drove went? right up to Con Aye. And the Channel. Yeah. And mm. stopped at hunting places in between. So Aye. Aye. Uh, Samir's a nice place. Well, that, that was another plus. The other thing that we've now mentioned was that at one of the morning meetings the president says do we need a pipe band this afternoon which I had to be very careful with because you give them their weekly programme mm-hmm. and if you wanted to slip somebody else in so where was this? in L'Oreal. ok and this was to play the Breton astronaut off the plane and his return for the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Okay, right. He and that developed through two years, three years, and I eventually got an invite to the space center in Texas. I did a seat, yeah. I was in the simulator mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, mm, the captain that was sitting at the side, aye. he'd been up in space nine times. Who is this, a Breton chap? No, no, I, the Breton chap had been in, in uh, space. Yeah. But this was him returning home. How did the Breton chap go into space? Because they'd been late for the interview for a start. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> folks, we could sit here all day talking and writing some marvellous stories. I've heard uh, just one or two. But uh, Dick and I have been making uh, various instances over the, the years. So, piping in Glasgow and uh, been across and met in Britain and met some of his uh, glorious friends and all this. And we've had a lot of uh, good times together. And uh, we're looking forward to use in Barra, uh, which Dougie does the thing I'll be on, but I'm telling you, I'll be on the beginning of March this year, 2022, watch this space. So, anyway, we can sit here all day, but we'll need to stop sometime. So, Dougie, thanks very much for your time to Piper's Persuasion today, and uh, we'll see if we can make a wee programme out of this. It's a pleasure, uh, Alan. It's a pleasure. Uh, I hope you all enjoy it, folks. I know you've enjoyed the conversation today, so thanks very much. Thanks, you.